in our series. My name is Eric Janesco. I'm the head coach and CEO of Maximum Acceleration, the professional's coaching program. And we started this series about, uh, about a year and a half ago, October of 2012. We launched this series as a, as a goal of bringing together a community of folks who are dedicated to a higher level of learning and perfecting and refining the skills and practices and strategies they use on a daily basis to achieve uh, faster growth in their business. You know, our, our company was actually founded in, back in 2004 with one major goal, and that was to help you get to your goals as fast as humanly possible. And so to that end, we've got a great program for you today that I'm excited to share with you. Fortunately, I do have a little bit of bad news. Um, as you know, we strive to provide the highest caliber of presenters in this type of programming. And as a result, we try and use uh, high-performing, high-quality originators. But as you often know, if you are a, an originator, you probably do work in some sort of corporate environment where sometimes the boss says, be here, and you have to go. Uh, so today, with very little notice, less than 24 hours notice, Derek called me just heartbroken yesterday and told me he was not going to be able to do today's program. An emergency company meet was called, and he had to spend the majority of this morning on the road. We tested the possibility of him presenting to you while he was en route and just found it not to be very functional or feasible. So uh, the program we're going to be doing today, I'm going to be actually bringing to you a program um, that I think will be very meaningful and valuable to helping you power up your purchase pipeline. Uh, and then uh, Mr. Derek Egerberg, we have rescheduled him. His program has been postponed to Tuesday, June 24th at the same time and location. And I'm going to paste into the session notes, actually my assistant Max Excel is going to be pasting into the chat uh, box at this moment. The uh, link you can go to if you want to go ahead and register for Derek's program on um, on June 24th, about a month month out from today, uh, Derek will be back with us, and we've rescheduled Derek's program for that point. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to bring Derek to you and wanted him to share with you is, is Derek is a true expert at relationship management and how to maximize repeat and referral business opportunities, especially in a purchase market, um, from uh, from his success and expertise at developing. Uh, automated contact management, retention, and repeat and referral uh, business mining. Really a student of the art of, of client relationship management. Um, and, and I'm excited that uh, he'll be back with us on June 24th. That, we, that was the earliest we could work it back into the calendar. Um, for that, I have to apologize. But like I said, Derek was just, on a, 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 like I said, he really was heartbroken about not being able to be with us um, today's program and did everything we could to try and make this work for you to get today's program. Um, but I'm going to be providing to you a program that is very similar in nature and will cover, uh, I think, some things that when, when Derek gets back with us in a month uh, that will round out. What I'm going to provide to you is a program I call Pipeline Power Up, um, how to get leads flowing faster with realtors um, and business partners like financial planners, CPAs, insurance agents, attorneys, those kind of things. One of the things we often do, and, and you guys have heard me give programs about powering up purchase partnerships, the, the one and one is 11 type of effect, and how, it, how we work forward to try to create a purchase business. Let me share with you a little bit about where that came from. See, I got in the business in 1996 as a junior loan officer. I literally sold my way into the business um, because of some personal situations going on at the time. I realized I was pretty good at sales, but that I was studying to become a music teacher, and so was my wife. She graduated a year ahead of me, and her first teaching job paid about 6000 a year or less than I had made working part-time in a sales job and going to school full-time. And so as a result, my wife and I made the decision that I needed to go into something that used my sales and communication skills in a more profitable way. And so I got into the mortgage business. I signed on as a junior loan officer for a gentleman who had a team of three other support staff. I was his fourth staff person. And as a team, that team of about five of us, we were doing about 45 loans a month. This is back in 1996 or 97. This was before automated underwriting and all the other technology that makes it a little bit more efficient. And everything was you know, hand copies, manual type stuff. But, but there was one big problem about that loan officer. It, it, the, the business that, that he did was a very heavy percentage refinance business. About 90% of the volume we did was roughly uh, FHA and VA streamlines. So I had a great opportunity over the first nine months in the career uh, in this industry to learn a lot about underwriting guidelines and how to massage loans through the system. I, I had 
the opportunity to work on a little over 400 files in eight months. Um, and, and that was a great experience. The problem was in 1996, or in, excuse me, in 1997, we had one of those fluke market jumps similar to what happened about a year ago, uh, back in May of 2013. Many of you might remember that we saw interest rates jump from the low threes up into the mid fours in the span of a, just a handful of days. Uh, well, back in 1997, the same thing happened. We lost about 450 basis points in pricing. Uh, in less than a week, interest rates jumped up about 1.5% on note rate. And because my boss had a habit of waiting until the last minute to lock his loans, uh, something like 43 of the 60-some-odd loans we had in the pipeline at the time vanished overnight. And as a result, myself and another gentleman were out on the streets looking for a job. Well, after bouncing around for a while and finally finding a place to hire me with only eight months' experience in the business, um, I was able to land a, a job as a loan officer with a, with a mortgage company in, in a little town called Springfield, Missouri, a uh, town I grew up in. And as I struggled for the first couple of months out on my own as a loan officer, I was really having a hard time making it work and, and trying to get going the things that needed to be put in place to, to be able to generate a solid business volume. And of course, there was no refinance business to be had whatsoever. Um, interest rates uh, being what they were, it didn't make any sense at all to tr try and pursue refinance business, or at least to me at the time, it didn't make any sense. Not only that, but the company I worked for at the time, uh, refinance business was paid at about a quarter of the commission rate that the purchase business was. Their comp structure was such that uh, they really wanted to ascend advice was going after purchase business. So as a result of struggling and struggling and struggling, I started asking the question, well, there's got to be some people who know how to do this purchase thing. Who are they and how do I get access to them? Well, through a series of investigation, I found a training class that was going on in Southern California. In 1998, I went out and invested in that training program. I spent, um, Lord only knows where I actually came up with the money for it. I think I stole it from my dad, in all honesty. But uh, anyway, I did go out uh, to that week-long training workshop. I learned some very functional and tactical skills that allowed me to build a, a very successful origination career. And over the following four years, doubled my business year over year consecutively, leaving the retail side of the business in 2002, having closed 237 purchase loans my last 12 months in the retail side of the industry. That led to me jumping out of, of retail and into wholesale for a short period of time and getting into training and development, which then led to me being invited to be part of the program, uh, part of the project that Tim Burkeen launched through Loan Toolbox. Uh, that started the Maximum Acceleration Coaching Program. And it's, it's been a very fun and very exciting ride since 2004, bringing uh, strategies, tools, and, and solutions to loan officers that are going to help them grow to the next level. And so, you know, part of the reason I started here is because here's the thing, guys. I mean, you know, we've just gone through one of the hardest winners we've seen in probably 10 years in this industry. Every day I talk to, you know, active coaching clients as well as a handful of prospective coaching um, participants, and, and we find that over time um, that this has been a very tough spring for a lot of our industry, and yet there's a very small percentage of our industry that are doing substantially more business this year than they were previous years. And part of that is because of strategic transitions that they have made over the course of the preceding couple of years that have led to their ability to achieve some of the results that they have, in fact, achieved. And so what I want to share with you is, is some strategies, ways, and, uh, and approaches where we can engage with business development partners, where we can go deep on how to create an efficient and effective flow of new leads and new purchase opportunities uh, with those business development partners that will supplement the lack of market activity that's just falling in our lap. I mean, you know, if you think back over the last 10 years, this is the first year in probably the last 10 where we've had a normalized purchase market. And the reason I say normalized purchase market is, is traditionally it is rather slow in the winter months through the holidays and, and the cold of January, February, and March in most of the parts of the country. And that's normal volume. The only problem is we haven't had a normal purchase style market for probably more than 10 years because every winter we've had refinance volume to supplement it. So we can look at the opportunity side or we can look at the obstacle side. And what I'm encouraging you to do today is look at the opportunity side. 
Well, one of the biggest opportunities I see in the market is home affordability at an all-time high. Now, this is copied from the charts connected to the NAR um, Housing Affordability Index, which was an index that never really made a whole heck of a lot of sense to me uh, until I started to get into the numbers of it a couple of years ago. And the reality is what the, what the index indicates is how much it, does it cost the air, average American family to buy the average American home, and it's calculated on a percentage basis. So yeah, we've seen a little bit of a deterioration in it, but we're still dealing with some of the best housing affordability we've seen literally in the last 60 to 70 years. In fact, the last time we saw home affordability uh, rates anywhere near this level, it'd have to go all the way back to the late 40s and early 50s. And part of the reason for that is just the drastic changes in interest rates and the still incredibly low market rates that we're seeing right now. I mean, this chart is actually goes all the way back to 1790. If you track long-term fixed interest rates all the way back to the 1790s, there would only be five periods in history totaling less than 30-something years where interest rates were substantially below 5%. And as a result of that, housing affordability is an at an all-time high. So the challenge becomes, how do we get the word out faster, and how do we identify and develop contacts and relationships and efficient systems that allow us to connect with and communicate to those folks who are in a position to benefit? The other thing we have to keep in mind, is, and this is something that I shared, like if you haven't if you haven't been a member of our or a participant in our regular programming, I encourage you to go back to our YouTube channel. Uh, just look up Maximum Acceleration on YouTube, and that will direct you to our channel. Um, look back at the program I did back in January called Make a Difference Challenge, trying to help people prepare for this opportunity. But long story short, um, you know, think about housing affordability. How much house somebody can afford when interest rates are four and a half percent? versus when interest rates are six and a half percent. You know, take your average rents per month in your area. Like for example, I did this with a client uh, not too long ago in uh, the New York Long Island area, and he was, you know, indicated that average uh, rental uh, monthly cost was around twenty-five hundred dollars a month. So we did some quick numbers, and we realized that twenty-five hundred dollars a month with principal and interest payment at 4.5% is a $523,000 loan, and at 6.5% is only a $416,000 loan. So with the 2% difference in interest rate and the same $2,500 per month housing payment, you're talking $100,000 more house. And what that means to a family and what that means as far as somebody's ability to be able to take advantage of. On the flip side of that, how much more buying power does a family today have with 4.5% interest rates versus what they had five, six, seven years ago when interest rates were averaging in the mid-sixes the majority of the time? Uh, you know, is it possible that they could add an extra, you know, if you're in a market that the average housing prices are 150 to 200,000, you're talking probably 20 to 25 percent more buying power, roughly 40 to 60,000 dollars more house for the same payment with that 2 percent difference in interest rate if you do the math. Because we all know that the, you know, the biggest part of that monthly interest, that mortgage payment is the interest, right? So let's talk about what it looks like to connect and go deeper with business development partners. Well, part of the reason I focus on business development partners, and you guys have heard me share this analogy before, the reality is is that there's an opportunity to create leverage and synergy, and it kind of comes back to that horsepower concept. You know, the reality is two horses, uh, one horse by himself can pull about 12,000 pounds of pull. Two, you'd expect at least double the results. But the scientists who did this study found out that the record was over 104,000 pounds of pull if you get both horses pulling in the same direction hitched to the same load. So when it comes to teaming up with business partners, how do we help them understand and recognize the value that we seek to provide that goes way beyond the ability to just get their deals done? How do we become the asset and resource that helps them achieve what equates to roughly eight times level of performance. 
Well, one of the ways that we do that is recognizing and understanding how we transition from partner to advisor. You know, at the end of the day, it all comes down to one simple concept, value. What value do we have to offer and do we seek to provide to those realtors, those insurance agents, those financial planners, those CPAs out there that go way beyond the value of just getting one deal done? One of the ways I often like to share this is think about uh, this example for a second. Think about investments. Let's say I've got $10,000 I want to use to buy some stock. I can buy it for 8 bucks a trade at E-Trade. Or I can go to a full-service financial advisor at an organization like Merrill Lynch. I'll roughly pay 150 bucks for the same trade. So why would I want to spend 16 to 17 times more for the same purchase of the same 100 shares of the same company that I could buy through E-Trade for 8 bucks a trade? Well, the reality is, is because the advisor is going to be the one to, to kind of watch my back and help me realize that that may not necessarily be the smartest choice. And out of the, the 10 or 15 companies that I could choose to invest in, he's going to be able to give me the feedback, the guidance, and the outside perspective and the research uh, of the financial performance of those companies to make a wiser choice. And his ability to help me create substantially better performance that and multiple future investments goes way beyond the value that I would receive just essentially being on my own, I mean gambling. So one of the things we want to think about is how do we position ourselves as the asset, the resource, and the advisor that's going to be able to partner with these agents to help them achieve at a significantly higher level. Now the reason I ask that question is because when we begin to think about how we approach agents, for example, real estate agents, one of the things we have to keep in mind is, is two important laws. And they're both called the law of caring. But the first one says people won't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I know that's kind of trite and cliche, and, and people give me a little bit of grief about that all the time. But the reality is, guys, um, you know, would it ever be repeated enough to be ignored if it weren't fundamentally true? I mean, how did it become a cliche in the first place if it wasn't? really functionally true. So we got to be careful not just dismiss concepts or ideas just because we hear them frequently. We need to remember the importance of focusing on the value that those nuggets have because of how true they really are. So think about that statement in a little greater depth for just a second. How do we show we really do care more about them and their success and growth than in some cases they do? The second law of caring is we don't know what we don't know until someone cares enough to show us. Now, I didn't realize that this was happening in my life at the time, but one of the greatest reasons that I achieved the volume of production I did as a retail originator was because I had a mentor. I had an advisor. Actually, I had many mentors, advisors, and coaches in my life at the time who really helped me see the way through the challenges and difficulties, the things that I couldn't see for myself that they cared enough to point out to me. So how does that translate to your ability to create value for business partners like realtors, insurance agents, and financial planners that goes way above and beyond the ability to just get their deals done? And especially with real estate agents, you've got to be a little bit careful because they only see us as vendors. And specifically as the market is heated up here, it's been hard to get their attention. I mean, you know, I know you guys are kind of going through this, and feel free to let me know through Q&A or chat if you're experiencing some of the same stuff. But it's getting harder and harder to get appointments with realtors, right? I mean, they're just so busy being busy, they're scrambling. They've starved most of the winter, and now they're hungry as you know what, and they're out there chasing down business, and they don't want to give us the time of day because they think that we're all painted the same, right? They think all loan officers are created equal. We're all just vendors who are there to provide a service that gets their deals done for them. Well, how do we go well above and beyond that? Well, one of the ways that we do it is by becoming that accountability partner, that resource, that asset, that guide that gives them that outside perspective. I mean, think about it from this perspective. What do these guys all have in common? The Michael Jordans, the Tom Brady's, and the Wayne Gretzky's of the world, what do they all share as a commonality? Well, they all had 
somebody who cared as much about their own success as they did, the person that was there to challenge them, to hold them accountable, to give them perspective and guidance and help them see the things they couldn't see for themselves. I mean, just think for a moment about the top uh, 10 or 15 realtors in your market that you want to work with or even the, the, the top five agents you're currently working with as an originator. Jot down for just a second. Take this as a practical exercise and pull out a scratch pad or a notebook uh, or something like that and, and jot down what are the top four or five things or let's even cut it back from there. What are the top one or two or three things that your agents are struggling with right now in their business? What are the one or two things that are the biggest obstacles to the agents you know doing significantly more business? Why is it an agent who works their butt off and is, uh, as, is quote unquote working 50, 60 hour weeks only producing eight or 10 deals a year, less than one deal a month? How many of those agents do you know that are like that, that are working really, really hard but hardly making anything? And what are the one or two or three things that you could help them do that would significantly impact their growth and their performance. Now, they may or may not be open to hearing from you about it. But at the end of the day, if you care enough to show them that you care about helping them do significantly more business and that you have some assets and tools in your arsenal that are going to help you do it, then you're going to be able to create that kind of value. So if you put yourself out there as a, as a running buddy, as a trusted advisor, somebody who can be a brainstorming or masterminding partner with them, what you find is, is that you can create a level of synergy and depth in that relationship and eventually a level of commitment and loyalty that goes well beyond the typical tit for tat, you send me a deal, I'll send you a deal, and we'll keep a scorecard type of relationship, or the type of very thinly veiled expectation of get my deals done so I get a paycheck, and if you don't, I'm going to fire you and replace you. That you're only as good as your last deal type of thing that realtors tend to put us in the box of all the time, right? So. When you become that outside resource that has credible knowledge about effective business practices and, and better introduction and sales strategies and ways to engage more clients in a shorter period of time, uh, somebody who can help give them that outside perspective to see the things that sometimes they're too close to that they can't see for themselves, that's there to also then work with them to develop a strategic plan and to focus on steady progress little by little over time, and then to hold them to those promises you become inordinately more valuable to those business partners than just the vendor who gets their deals done. I mean, reinforced by a study in 1998, Brigham Young University did a research study on ideas to action, what it took to create implementation. And they came back with basically four key elements. One was to create an action plan, or excuse me, one was to set a goal, two was to create an action plan, three was to commit a deadline for that project to be completed, and fourth was to share that progress and that deadline with someone and ask that person to hold you accountable. If you do those four things, set a goal, create an action plan, put a deadline on it, and ask somebody to hold you accountable to the deadline, you have a 95% chance of implementing. You do those four things. So as a result of that, we can provide those four things, guidance, you know, what goals are important to the, the business partner, what things are going to make a difference in their ability to do significantly more business in the coming weeks, months, and years, to what are the step-by-step -step action plans that need to be taken to achieve that goal, three, what's the appropriate timeline, what's a reasonable and functional expectation of completion, and four, how to be the accountability partner that keeps them going in the right direction. You provide that and you become inordinately more valuable. So I want to share with you, with the remainder of the time we have today, four key tactics or conversations that are going to help them understand and recognize where you, as a knowledge, knowledgeable, successful, and, and a committed business partner, can make a massive difference in the growth of their business. So there's four key conversations that we want to walk them through that are going to help them drive more purchase business and help you, as a result, connect with and capture that purchase business. 
and we'll talk about the commitment question at the very end of the program, how you actually get that done. So the first is the save the value of time conversation. The second is the bank of future opportunity conversation. The third is the capture more, capture every opportunity endorsement conversation. And the fourth is how to mine for opportunities and boost lead flow. So let's just go through these quick conversations very quickly one by one. Well, the challenges I asked you to write down a few minutes ago. One of them might have likely been desperate buyers getting discouraged, rushing ahead. Now, that's a, a way of, of identifying what are, you know, when realtors work with buyers today, what's one of their bigger struggles? The reality is they want it yesterday. They feel like they're already showing up too late to the party, and, and they're desperate to get it done. Especially in a tight inventory market, they feel like they're missing out, and they want to go shopping immediately, they, and they always seem to rush ahead especially since sometimes we let them do it. I mean, buyers don't necessarily realize how radically the approach process to buying a home is today than it was even 18 to 24 months ago when it was a different type of market. I mean, we are heavily in pretty much every major market that I talk to clients in across the country, we are heavily in a seller's market. For every new property that goes on listing, there are eight or 10 or 15 buyers that are offering within a matter of weeks on those properties particularly the grade A properties. The ones that aren't getting as much attention are the ones that are the grade B, you know, lower quality, lower caliber properties. So, you know, 18 months ago when it was a solid buyer's market and there were, you know, there were 10 buy there were 10 homes for every one buyer as opposed to the market we're in today, it was fine to take your time and, and shop around and and you know, talk to a realtor and, and look at twenty or thirty or fifty or a hundred homes and then narrow it down from there. And there was no real sense of urgency on a buyer's part to do anything in any other time order. And and by that point, the sellers were so desperate to get an offer, uh, they would, you know, they were very patient. Buyers had a lot of control. Well, 18 months later, today's market, that, that, that circumstance has slipped 180 degrees. And so the problem is, is there's a whole lot of time agents are spending with buyers who really aren't ready to buy yet. And right now, the biggest problem that most buyers have is they're, they're, they're getting the, the process backwards. They're getting all excited about shopping for property, and they're jumping in cars with realtors and touring around and visiting properties before they've even talked to a lender. Or if they have talked to a lender, they've talked to a lender who really hasn't done a thorough, accurate, and validated pre-approval review. So one of the conversations we can have with an agent is what we call the value of time conversation. You know, recognizing with the agents and talking to them about, you know, Mr. Agent, I don't know if there's any merit to this or not, um, but uh, the reality is in the today's market, I think that, that seller buyers in a lot of cases have things backwards. The challenge is, is how much time can you afford to spend with a buyer who's really not in a position to be competitive right now with this tight market, with 10 buyers, uh, you know, with, with 10 uh, buyers for every one property and how competitive things are, um, to me it almost seems irresponsible to be showing property to buyers who aren't in, in a situation where they're fully vetted. And the worst thing I can imagine happening for a buyer is that they get all excited about a property, they don't have their loan in place, and they miss out on a house they've fallen in love with, they get discouraged and quit the entire process. So how do we make sure that we're effectively and efficiently up front doing some basic filtering. Well, one of our active coaches members, Randall Brower, introduced a concept he called the four buckets. And this is something that many may of you have used known. I mean, the reality is today, uh, especially with the tightened lending guidelines, the, and, it, and this has even gotten worse since QM rolled out in January, but the reality is is that, you know, whereas, you know, five, six, seven years ago, probably only one out of ten was going to get declined for a loan, you know, anybody could talk in Europe and find, find some form of a loan, today we all know how tight the ratios are, but our agents don't. They don't realize that in today's market, more often than not, only about one out of ten is really ready to go right now, and they fall in the green bucket. You know, the second group is the fact the folks that could get ready in three to six months or maybe a little bit less um, with a little extra work on the front end, getting it pushed through underwriting and getting an opinion and commitment letter from the underwriter up front before we turn them loose because they've got some hair on them. You know, they're not really clean shaven and ready to walk in the front door. Um, the other ones are the ones that probably could get ready in six months or less with a little bit of guidance. Um, you know, maybe they need a little more job seasoning time or they need to save up a little extra for down payment or they, they, they've got a couple of credit issues they need to 
correct or deal with. And that's where we leverage tools and resources, stuff like um, you know, some of the technology and systems that are out there. A couple of weeks ago, we introduced you to a system that uh, allowed you to dig deeper and focus on uh, the things that are going to help the agents protect their time and go deeper. So that's kind of value of the time conversation. The first one we have with the agents is, you know, are they really spending their time with folks who are really ready to buy now? And, and are we... And, we have an opportunity to work with that agent to help filter out who are the ones that are ready to go right now, that already have their fully verified pre-approval and they have the blank check burning a hole in their pocket, they're ready to rock and roll, versus who are the ones that aren't quite ready and need a little bit of incubation before they're going to be able to get ready. So that's the first one of those. The second key conversation is the conversation that we talk about of incubating leads, which is just to say to that agent, kind of going back to the the silver and the and the bronze bucket of you know if uh, you know Mr. By agent at the end of the day, I'm going to turn you loose on the ones that are ready to rock and roll right away, so you can get contracts on it. Everybody else, I'm going to work with them to incubate them, and when they are ready, I'm going to bring them back to you, which is kind of that bank of future opportunities. You think about it, every five buyers who refer to me, assuming probably one out of five is ready to go right now. Um, you know, so next week you refer me ten more, and and now there's eight of them that are you know in an incubation phase, and we do that several months. How many, uh, you know, how many potential leads could come back to you if you think about how that could escalate? Now, part of my job is is again filtering efficiently how that's all going to work and what that's going to look like, and that's kind of where it becomes that leverage of systems, tools, and strategies that make a significant difference. Now. Part of the reason I introduced this concept of the four buckets is, is you know, ready to go or where the agents need to work. And obviously, we then need to try and spend as much time as possible getting to as many of those ready to go buyers as possible and getting them back in the hands of our agents. Um, the questionable leads and the incubation leads may or may not be uh, a major asset to you, but I can tell you the results and proof in the pudding of doing it. Um, part of the reason Randall shared this concept with me is, is he's a raving fan of our system. Um, and a while back, sent me this quote. I mean, essentially, uh, over the first two years he was in coaching with us, he increased, basically doubled his business two years consecutively. Last year, having done a little over a quarter million first quarter of the year as a result of implementing these kinds of strategies with his business development partners in his market. And part of it is leveraging efficient resources like the tools that are provided by Avantis, uh, the credit experts or credit essentials, and what-if simulators uh, that you all have access to. So creating a better front-end channel that allows clients to be able to get the information they need effectively and efficiently, having an effective process of connecting with buyers and very quickly engaging them and then getting them cleared out and vetted, then leads you to do more meaningful and more valuable and more substantial things with clients that are ready to work with. So when we do identify an effective, you know, a qualifiable borrower who's ready to move forward with the kind of ideas and guidance, then we have an opportunity to introduce a second con or a third conversation with the agent, which is what we call the um, the agent endorsement or power of endorsement conversation. One of the reasons for this is maybe one of the other challenges you wrote down about what agents are experiencing right now is one of the reasons agents are a little bit hesitant to let go at the front end and let us talk to their buyers right away is because, one, um, that's how they built loyalty over and, and credibility and rapport. Most agents in the markets out there uh, have, have had fallen into a pattern of a sales strategy, which is they want to get them to visit homes as fast as possible. Uh, it seems like every agent I know and have worked with over the last three to five years has been pretty much focused on that as their initial intake strategy. Get them in the car, show them houses. Well, that worked in a buyer's market. That's not so effective in a market like we're in now, but some of the reasons that agents are a little bit le hesitant to let go and introduce us to those buyers very early on in the process is because they're afraid of losing that buyer. They're afraid that that buyer is going to feel like they haven't been served properly. Um, and, and as a result of that, that buyer desperation and disloyalty has kicked in. And maybe even some agents have lost some borrowers or buyers to, to other competitors who were more aggressive about it or who had a better, did a better job of positioning themselves on the front end. So one of the ways that we can make 
the agent feel a little more comfortable with introducing us and show how we can be a significant asset to them is by demonstrating how we want to endorse them. I mean, it all comes back to this simple issue of credibility. I mean, if this guy was trying to sell me exercise equipment, would he be very effective? Would I consider him to be very credible when it comes to promoting exercise equipment? <laughs> the obvious answer being probably not. You know, if I'm looking for an exercise salesman, to, a guy to sell me exercise equipment, I'm probably looking for something more like the Bowflex guy, right? <laughs> Obviously, this guy is a heck of a lot more credible when trying to sell exercise equipment. So how do we help our agents become the Bowflex guy? In fact, how do we even start that conversation in the first place with an agent? How do we even introduce this as a topic or idea? Well, what one of the ways I'm trying to do it is what I call an agent endorsement conversation, um, which is part of a, a patterned uh, sales conversation that we teach our uh, coaching members and clients is, is what we call the how do you like to be referred conversation. Basically, starts with the question to the agent of Mr. Agent, how do you like to be referred? Well, one of two things is going to happen. The agent's going to get where I'm going with this. They've maybe been through some sort of like a Dale Carnegie or a Sandler sales training system, and they understand value-based positioning up front and the importance of an uh, introduction, whether they call it an elevator speech, a, 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 excuse me, elevator pitch, 30-second commercial, or something like that. It's, it's basically a value proposition statement. Okay? So, Either one, I'm working with an agent or talking to an agent who has already received that kind of knowledge and, and training, and they get it and they understand it, and they'll give me, and uh, you know, uh, they'll tell kind of what the talking points of their value proposition are. Great, easy to leverage. More often than not, they're not going to have a clue, and I'm going to get that kind of deer in headlights look that you all get when you're talking with realtors, right? Well, the the, the reality of that is, okay, so what do I do then? Well. That's a perfect opportunity that I've established somewhat on purpose to demonstrate the kind of value-based endorsement that I would want them to give me, but I'm going to do it in reverse first. So, Mr. Agent, well, let me give you an example. Um, one of the things that I like to do is when I hand a buyer to an agent that I think would be a good fit for them. I want to make as clean of a handoff as possible, and part of that is helping that buyer understand the value they should expect to receive from the agent. So I like to introduce the agent by doing sort of a, a sample agent endorsement conversation, something that goes a little bit along the lines of this. You know, Mr. Buyer, and by the way, just pause for a second, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm now shifting out of uh, agent conversation mode and into agent demonstration mode. So essentially what I'm saying to the agent is, you know, what I would like to do for you, Mr. Agent, is to give an endorsement of you that sounds like this. Okay? So, you know, one of the things I like to say to buyers here is, you know, Mr. Homebuyer, at the end of the day, one of the most valuable assets you have in this home search process is a skilled, knowledgeable, and successful professional real estate advisor. A little bit different than your typical sales agent who's just there advertising one specific property and is doing everything they can to sell it. up front to identify what you're looking for and what's a smart choice for you and your family from the next purchase of a home, uh, not only from a place to live but also from an asset standpoint. Secondly is that skilled, knowledgeable agent is going to be able to search the database then of all the properties available in the market, including for sale by owners, and find a home that's the, the homes that meet your needs, and they're going to save you a tremendous amount of time in that search process. Thirdly, if you if allow them to do so through what's called a buyer's agency arrangement, which they can discuss the P's and Q's and the legalities of that. I'm not an attorney. I don't intend to play one on TV either. Kind of disclaimer. Um, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, they may even be able to negotiate on your behalf and really be your skilled um, person that's going to go to bat for you and help you maybe negotiate better terms when it comes time to make an offer on the property that you that is the best fit for you. So. Here's the thing. There's a handful of these folks out there that are really, truly these skilled real estate advisors, and, and one of them happens to be my good friend Joe over at Remax. Um, you know, Joe is one of those true professionals that blah, 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 and blah. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Joe give you a call. Is that okay? 
Now, for you guys listening on this webinar, I just went through that relatively quickly. Now, you guys are going to have access to the recording of this program within a couple of days. Our team is going to get it forward out to everybody who's registered for today's program. And the realities are that uh, I, you're probably going to want to take a little bit of time, break that down, and outline some of the key talking points of that agent endorsement conversation. But basically, what I'm talking to the buyer about is the benefit they would receive from talking to that agent. And then I'm going to make a clean handoff to the agent after I've set the expectation with the buyer that the agent's going to be calling them. Now, I've just done that demonstration for my agent. Now, the agent is now probably thinking that would be a good way of helping him engage more clients and increase his capture rate. If he hasn't already figured that out, I might want to just reinforce that before I move to the next part of the conversation. And that's kind of where that next piece comes in is saying, look, you know, this is a way that I've developed over time. We have a system of doing this. I've mapped out for you kind of how this introduction works and, and what would be the best response for you to use when you actually receive that handoff. Um, so that we can make a clean break on this. Part of that is because I want to do everything I can, Mr. Agent, to help you grow your business and increase your capture or conversion ratio. I mean, if I only help you convert one or two out of ten more than you're doing right now, that's going to be, an, for most agents, a, a, you know, a 25 to 30 percent increase in volume just by increasing their conversion or capture ratio a small percentage. So that's one thing that I really would like to do for you if you give me the opportunity. Now, the third key part of this conversation comes back to this whole idea of uh, the opportunity mining and how we go about identifying more buyers from more potential buyers. Now, one of my clients who's done very well with this over the last couple of years is a gentleman by, Adam, by the name of Adam Kernan in Charleston, South Carolina. And you know, Adam, um, as a result, recently sent me a quote that he just had the best week of his career. He'd done 13 new loan applications in a single week as a result of implementing some of these strategies. Now, two of the strategies that he did to boost lead flow connect in two areas, one of which is that he's more effective at casting a bigger net and attracting a much higher volume of potential business because he's mining his own database. He's actively seeking out and reaching to all of his past customers and checking in with them frequently on you know, what's going on with their housing situation? Are they, you know, if the house they're in still meeting their needs? If not, housing is at an all-time affordability. Love to talk to you about uh, what we could do to maybe help you make some steps forward that will help you and your family improve your housing situation. He does that frequently. And, and that's part of what has led to his success and the volume of business. The other thing that he does is through the course of a transaction, we all know that there are multiple times during the course of a normal loan transaction, especially a purchase, where we have a naturally positive interaction with a buyer, right? And as a result of those naturally positive interactions with a the buyer, there's a natural opportunity. They have received and feel gratitude for us and have a natural desire to reciprocate. So we just need to help them understand how best to do that. So. One of the things, and, and by the way, some of those key milestones in the transactions, I mean, think about like when you first give them their pre-approval, when they've found the property and you've worked out the numbers for them and, and, and they realize finally that the, that the payment's going to work for them, maybe even a little better than expected. When they um, are, have received their appraisal and it's come in a little above value, when, um, when you finally receive their clear to close and all conditions are approved and you're doing a closing rehearsal. You know, those are just four of the key examples, and the fifth one probably being at closing when they're getting keys to their new home that they're all excited about, right? Well, each one of those opportunities is an opportunity to engage that customer in a conversation that talks about who else they may know that may be in a position to benefit from the housing opportunity. And just like I mentioned at the beginning of the call, the unfortunate irony of today's market is, is that the people who are most likely to benefit are probably the least likely to be aware of how much affordability they really have. For example, the couple that has just worked hard, kept their nose clean, um, has struggled through the, the economic hardships of the last couple of years, and pays their bills on time. But yet they're still renting the same apartment they've been in for two or three years. 
and literally at a thousand dollars a month are flushing you know twelve thousand dollars a year down somebody else's toilet right so part of this comes back to how do we engage that client who we are doing a loan for right now in a conversation that leads to the possibility of him sharing with us the, the names of the family and friends he knows. And why is that so important? Well, we know two things statistically. Sociologists have been telling us for years that the average human uh, talks to 30 to 35 people a week kind of first name basis type. I mean, think about it. How many people do you bump into by the, time, by the time you get to the office every single morning between your daily commute, stopping for coffee, running errands, and et cetera, et cetera? Um, the second thing we know is that the average American family moves every five to seven years. As a result of that, that means one-fifth to one-seventh of the population is already thinking about moving in the next 12 months, right? So if you do the math on that, every buyer we talk to knows 30 to 35 people that they're relatively close to, their sort of inner circle, circle of influence type uh, personal connections. Um, we also know out of those 30, if one-fifth to one-seventh of them are in a position to benefit from a change in housing, that that's five to seven people every buyer we know knows. Now, here's one of the things to think about. What's the right way to approach them? You know, if I ask a typical buyer, do you know anybody who needs a house or could benefit from a refinance, 90% of the time they're going to tell me no because it's their easiest and first most natural response. It doesn't mean they're lying to me. It means that nobody's immediately top of mind. But if I ask them, you know, Mr. Buyer, who do you know that could benefit from a change in their housing situation? For example, um, you know, the, the, the couple that works hard, pays their bills on time, and has been renting the same apartment for the last couple of years. Probably because they've been, uh, they've bought into the myth that housing affordability is out of reach and that they, you know, they'd have to have 20% down in perfect credit to buy, which isn't true. Who do you know that maybe is the family that bought a home in 2006 or 7 um, and, and you know, at the time had no kids or one kid and now they've got three kids and they're literally busting seams in that tiny little, you know, three bed, one bath, uh, you know, 1,200 square foot starter home they bought back in 06. Probably the primary reason they haven't upgraded is because they don't think they can afford to because they're thinking with what monthly housing costs look like in 2006 money at 6.5% versus 2014 money at mid to low fours in interest rate and how much more buying power that family may have. So long story short here, guys, is, is that the human brain works a lot like a computer, um, not from capacity or, or intelligence level or ability to think for itself, but we are as human beings pre-programmed, pre, to, to, we're predisposed predisposition to respond to specific questions in very specific ways. If I ask you, who do you know, your brain is tasked with finding me a name. If I ask, do you know, you're going to give me a quick yes or no, and that's the end of the thought process. So as we talk to our buyers during the course of a uh, transaction. By the way, somebody just chatted and that, that I dropped out for a minute. Um, am I back online now? Can you guys hear me again? All right. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin, for the feedback. Um, anyway, long story short, guys, um, passionate about serving. Um, when we're in those conversations, when we're having that naturally positive interaction, and by the way, it, you know, clients will often ask me, when, you know, when should we ask for referrals? My first thing I'm going to tell you is early and often. The other thing you have to understand about the human brain is that it's like a radar. Um, and I've talked about the yellow Honda effect in a couple of different ways. Um, but long story short, we're, I mean, you guys, you guys know the car you, you just want you bought or the car you want uh, you really want seems to be the only car on the road. Everything else gets ignored, but the ones that are just like the thing that you really want or just bought seems to all of a sudden the one that jumps in your mind. You can't go anywhere without seeing a couple of them, rare as they may be. Um, so long story short, uh, our buyers are kind of on the same wavelength. I mean, they're thinking about their primary goal for that period of time is buying a home. So from the time that they first contact us or a realtor talking about the idea of buying a home 
until a couple of days or a couple of weeks after they close that loan, their radar, their RAS, or reticular activation system, their yellow Honda effect, if you will, is bringing to their attention everybody around them. All of a sudden, they're going to feel like they're the worst eavesdropper on the planet because it seems like everybody around them is talking about buying a home, right? So why would we not want to tap into that during that magic 60 to 90 days that we're interacting with that buyer, helping them achieve their goal of buying a home? One of the easiest ways to do this is, is just off the heels of a positive interaction. Let's take, for example, I've just done my uh, initial loan consultation with a, loan, uh, with a borrower, and, and I've turned him loose to introduce him to an agent, and then there's one final step I'm going to say, oh, by the way, Mr. Customer, as you can probably tell, I'm pretty passionate about getting the message out about this incredible housing affordability and how much buying power people really have in today's market. So we're doing everything we can through what I call the Home Opportunity Initiative to reach as many families as we can in the shortest period of time because we know this window is likely to be closing in a very short period of time. And as a result of that, we'd really like to enlist your help in that mission. So let me ask you something. Who do you know, for example, that is a you know, a family that has a stable job, works hard, pays their bills on time, but they've been renting the same apartment or townhome for the last couple of years. And then I go into these couple of who questions. Now, by the way, it's a dialogue. You know, it's who do you know, get a name, what's the best way to reach them, and building a list. Would you mind if, if you know, would you mind introducing me, or is it okay if I use your name as a way of opening a door? So the next steps then become, how do we introduce this concept to realtors? So we're sitting down with a realtor. We're talking about ways that we can help them grow their business. One of the things that we could talk to them about is how that can geometrically progress. You know, my goal, Mr. Agent, is we use an active opportunity mining system at the five to seven key points during the course of the transaction where there's a naturally positive interaction. We're going to be encouraging and hopefully inspiring our active buyers to help share uh, the home buying opportunity with the people they care about and know about that could be in a position to benefit. The ultimate goal is, you know, finding five to seven people we can reach out to to identically whittle it down to one or two people who get serious. So every one buyer leads to two more and those lead to four and then eight and then 16 and then it just literally explodes from there. And we can just watch it grow using that active opportunity mining. Now, when I talk to agents about that, I've now had, through the course of what I've shared with you today, you've had three really, four really powerful conversations with agents about how you can be an asset to helping them do significantly more business. But if we stop there, it'd be like quitting a mile before the finish line in a marathon. Why'd you run the first 25 if you're not going to finish the last mile? Kind of pointless, isn't it? So. The last thing we've got to do is we've got to be confident and assertive in the value we seek to provide, and then we've got to engage those business development partners and ask them to introduce us. Well, one of the ways that we can do that is reinforcing the partnership and talking about the strategic planning and power partner development system that we have in place and that we want to make sure we're implementing for them and on their behalf. So you could certainly say something like, well, at the end of the day, Mr. Customer or Mr. Agent, I don't mean to be facetious here, but it almost seems like it, you know, it, it, it would be costly not to introduce me to every buyer you're working with because you know, as much as I'd love to be able to implement systems like the edification and opportunity mining and value of time uh, and, and incubation process for you, I really can't unfortunately do that on buyers I don't have the opportunity to work with. So then it makes sense to at least give me a crack at every buyer you're working with regardless of whether they're pre-approved with somebody else or not. I mean, it's up to me whether I can convert them or not. Just like when I made the introduction of you, Mr. Agent, I'm saying, well, at the end of the day, Mr. Buyer, it's going to be worth it to you to spend time with this agent, whether you choose to work with him or not. Is that okay? So then I want to schedule the next appointment before I leave this appointment with that agent. Or before I get off the phone with that agent, I want to connect it to a next step. And I want to try and continue to engage and reinforce that as much as possible, leading from one conversation to another. And the way that we do that is then working on asking them to endorse us, talking about the commitments that we would look for and like to see from them that empower us to be able to do more of these styles of conversation. Now, guys, I know we're, we're right at the end of our timeline. It, it took me a little bit longer to get through some of the preamble stuff than I had expected on today's program. I went a little bit deeper into a couple of the earlier concepts. 
But one of the things I want to make sure that you're aware of is, is right at the end, I am going to go a little bit long today. If, if those of you who can hang with me, great. If not, um, you know, you guys will have access to the replay of today's program as well as we'll be sending out a copy of the PowerPoint from today's slides um, along with the video recording that we'll share with you a little bit later in the week. Keep in mind the video production does take a couple of uh, hours of work. Um, our team has to go behind the scenes and do some rendering and, and stuff like that to uh, to get it done uh, and get it produced in a format that will actually play in a streaming environment. So it does, it, usually by Thursday or Friday of this week, you should be able to see that uh, email come out with the links to the recording and everything. Um, anyway, that being said, um, I will share with you guys um, how you can act access to this Power Partner Development System um, here in about 10 minutes. I did want to stop for just a second. Those of you that are still online and those of you that have an opportunity to hang with me on this, um, any questions that you guys would like to see me address or take it uh, um, uh, present? If you would, please, guys, go ahead and post in the Q&A right now uh, any of the questions relevant to the topic that we've talked about. Um, the strategies that we've outlined as far as how to engage these agents and partners deeper and faster, how to connect with them at a level that makes sense and that produces a better overall result. Go ahead and get those posted in the Q&A um, at this time. There was one question that popped up um, uh, back when I was going through the agent notification. Yes, at some point, I, the question was basically how do you get the agents to want to introduce you? Well. Um, unfortunately, I ran out of time. Maybe here in just a minute, I can go back to that in just a second. But basically, it's asking them to give a similar endorsement of us that we've demonstrated of them. We want to ask them to give a values-based endorsement of us and encourage the, um, the, the buyer that they're introducing to us to want to talk to us because they talk about the value that we seek to provide. I mean. Yeah, this is a little bit different topic. If you guys go back to the um, the video uh, on our YouTube channel called the Make a Difference, uh, not the Make a Difference, well, Make a Difference Challenge, we'll have some benefit of this. But uh, there is one particular um, episode in this series called Mastering First Impressions. And we talked a lot about how to create that uh, value for a borrower that goes beyond the pricing and service of one deal, getting one deal done, how do we become the advisor to that uh, borrower. Anyway, that's the kind of introduction we would like an agent to give to us. Um, while you guys go ahead and keep posting those questions in, um, I'm going to go ahead and watch through this. In the interest of time, there's several of you that, I, uh, that I'm seeing that are hanging on here. I'm sure you're probably wanting to get to the final piece of this, which is how you get access to this system, these tools, and these strategies. Well, there's a couple of quick things that I want to share with you while you guys continue to post in the Q&A. Um, so like I said, guys, go ahead and feel free to post those questions now um, so that we can, uh, so that I can address them here um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll kind of continue to move forward. Um, but anyway, so long story short, let me just introduce you just really quickly to what Maximum Acceleration is, what it provides, and how you can get access to those tools and resources that I mentioned to you. Uh, throughout the course of the BAGE program. Well, basically, there's one of three ways you can get it. At Maximum Acceleration, we offer basically three levels of service, depending on what level of investment and budget you're willing with. One is our home study program materials. Um, we have a, a library of a couple of different programs available uh, that uh, are basically self, uh, self-directed self training. They're, they're prepackaged home study course materials with DVDs, study guides, and tools and resources that are provided. It's a lot more than just watching a video. It comes with all the, the and, and by the way, they're facilitated learning, so they walk you through an active, engaged learning process um, uh, using a technology called active response learning. Um, anyway, it, I know it, those of you education theorists might understand what I'm talking about. For everybody else, it's just they're they're programs that are designed to really walk you through step by step how to actually implement, and and they're designed to start and stop different uh, places to where you 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 share a concept or idea, uh, you are given that concept or idea, and then you're given exercises via the video to do on your own uh, that will reinforce that concept and increase the likelihood that you'll implement it in your daily business. That's step one. Step two um, is our group or on-site coaching programs. There's two different versions of this. One is we offer public group programs, which are what we call our critical mass program, um, which you can find out more information about it on our website, mxlcoach.com. If you go under the tab that says group coaching, um, uh, that will be where you want to, where you can access that. Um, and then the third uh, level 
Well, I take that back. Uh, bear with me two seconds. Um, the critical mass program um, is the essentially the core that we teach from that has all of these different strategies embedded in it. Um, basically, there are 17 core competencies we've identified over the last 10 plus years doing this professionally. The tens of thousands of hours of research and development work that's gone into the development of our program and processes, um, and the literally thousands of clients that we've put through our programs in different formats, uh, functions, and strategies. If you are a executive level manager, uh, owner, producing manager, uh, branch manager, and you have a group of loan officers that you would like to receive um, more effective and efficient coaching in a more immersive environment that focuses on step-by-step -step implementation over an extended period of time, skills refinement, and long-term behavior change, um, we do offer a customized version of that critical mass group coaching curriculum um, that is available on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, we will customize a program for you and your organization, and, and I'll spend a little bit of time with you to identify, um, or one of our lead coaches will spend a little bit of time with you to identify what your core needs are for your team, what the, uh, the strategies are, uh, and approaches that will help you identify and overcome those challenges, and then a step-by-step -step plan to help your team implement it over an extended period of time, really more of the ongoing accountability and reinforcement that actually creates that lasting behavioral change. Then, of course, the program that our, our hallmark program, what we've been, uh, what is about 80% of what we do currently, um, and where we started initially is our one-on-one -on -one coaching program. Now, the one-on-one -on -one coaching program may seem like a significant investment to Pricing is around $64.95 for a six-month semester of coaching. Often our clients are in the program for 18 to 24 months or sometimes longer, uh, but we only renew in maximums of six-month semesters because we want to keep accountability high. However, you can actually do a month-by-month -month program if you're interested for $14.95 for the first month and then $900 a month thereafter. There are some bonus tools and resources that come along with that. In either the one-on-one -on -one or group coaching programs, you are able to get access to all of our home study materials, the Maximum Influence Series, uh, Greg Frost teaching how to win every sale every time by focusing on the six laws of ethical influence, mortgagized to the uh, mortgage home buyer and realtor sales process, our trade show success strategy is how to generate a massive volume of new home buyer leads uh, at every public event you attend. Our um, uh, Double Your Income with Power Partners program, which is a six-part web shop video home, co home study course. By the way, all of our home study courses, uh, you're seeing some pricing outlined in this screen. The total value of all of these programs that are included, including a monthly subscription access to Loan Toolbox, Platinum Market, Mortgage Market Guide, and Mortgage Market Guide Weekly, would be a total value of over $12,000 for six months of coaching that you could get access to for as little as $52.95. Um, there is a question in here for comparison about uh, maximum acceleration and core training program. Um, I can share a little bit of that, that with you uh, here in just a minute, but let me, let me move a little bit further through the program and just so you get a snapshot. Anyway, so one of the things you may want to consider doing is, is to take advantage of this. If you are really serious about taking your business to the next level, you really do want to make the commitment that this is the, the year that you want to make it happen. Now is the time to make hay while well, the sun is shining and make sure you capture the highest percentage of the, the busy summer buying season. Um, right now is the time to get started. It may seem a little overwhelming, but can you really afford not to? If you even picked up an extra you know, 1 or 2% uh, you know, of market share in the next couple of months, if you picked up one or two extra deals from one or two extra business development partners, what would an extra two or three or four loans a month over the next five months turn into as far as revenue and return on investment for you um, with this kind of a, a, a basic coaching investment? Just to, to sweeten the pot a little bit, we put together a fast action bonus. Uh, we will, for the first four of you who go ahead and invest in the program off of today's program, uh, we do have a time limit on this, and it is going to be on a first-come, first-served basis, but the reality is that uh, the first three of you go ahead and jump on, you're going to get three additional bonus sessions in addition to the regular coaching sessions, which you'll receive as part of the base program. The other thing that I wanted to encourage you to do is for the next 24 hours, for those of you who are serious about taking this to the next level, I've realized that this is what you need to create a 
uh, a more effective and more uh, consistent growth pattern in your life and in your business, and you really are ready to take it to the next level, we'll, uh, we're going to offer one additional incentive, uh, an additional $300 off for a fast action bonus uh, that you can go ahead and take advantage of. You can get started for as little as 1195 for the first month and 900 a month thereafter. By the way, keep in mind, uh, one of the other differences between us and any of the competing coaching firms that are out there, we believe in accountability. Our only goal is helping you get to your goals as fast as humanly possible. As a result of that, I've never really believed in long-term contracts or commitments. I, I don't believe in the idea of locking you into a, uh, a two- or three-year program and then just being obnoxious or belligerent about letting you out of that contract. And in some cases, well, fortunately, this company is now out of business, but there was at one point in our industry a company that was notorious for even sending uh, people to collections if they didn't finish out their 12 or 24 month coaching subscription. In our case, it's a month by month basis. We offer a, a no money back, um, I mean a, a no questions asked, 20 day cancellation policy. Uh, essentially 20 days before the next renewal cycle, you let us know that you're, uh, you're ready to move beyond coaching at that point, uh, whether it's been great and you've achieved everything you wanted to or whether it didn't quite work out the way you expected and, and you know, despite the best efforts of you and the coach to make it work, it just was a poor fit, um, you know, and you decide it's, it's not time or maybe you just weren't really willing in the first place to, uh, to make the commitment and make the investment. I mean, at the end of the day, um, I can lead a horse to water, but I can't make him drink. Part of our job as coaches, though, is to try and make you thirsty by putting salt in your oats, if you get the analogy where that's going. But the reality is the one person I can't help is the guy who's, who's unhappy enough with the situation to whine about it but not serious enough about changing it to do something about it. But if that's not you, if you're one of the, the people who is serious and committed and ready to take it to the next level, we'd love to have you aboard. And if you make that decision in the next 24 hours, you'll be able to access for 1195 for the first month, 900 per month thereafter for the one-on-one -on -one program. Again, it's you know this is a service we offer. This is our passion and our commitment and everything we're built around is the idea of how to help you take it to the next level. It's not for everybody. Um, it may not be within your budget to get um, to be able to make that kind of investment. And we totally understand that. We want to help you and support you in any way possible. So, if that's a little too uh, uh, a little bit, uh, you know, if you're not in a position to be able to stomach the one-on-one -on -one or don't, just don't have the budget for it at this point, there are some other tools and resources available. One of the best ones I can recommend off the heels of today's program, which would give you a really solid foundation in how to identify, attract, and secure loyal, committed, high-volume partnerships with real financial planners, CPAs, and insurance agents. Um, one of our best program options is a program uh, we call the Double Your Income Training Program. It's based on the concepts, ideas, and strategies I learned back in the late 90s that allowed me to reach the levels of production I personally did. We've now taught and, and, and trained over 10,000 originators have been through this particular program. Uh, and, and the performance results are outstanding as far as the kind of quality of commitment and results that they've achieved. So this Double Your Income program is available in a six-part on-demand training program. The videos and tools and materials and resources are all housed in an instant download website that you'll have unlimited access to. It walks you through step-by-step -step through over a little over seven hours of programming and, and learning exercises and tools how to really build those effective and rapidly growing partnerships so that you're powering up your purchase business. Um, the concepts and ideas I've shared with you in today's webinar are just one small segment of that program and training. The, the six hours, uh, this Double Your Income Home Study Course material um, is the whole enchilada of the system from end to end that will walk you through how to do it. Um, if you're interested in taking advantage of that, it's regularly $6.95 for that program. Um, we are offering it uh, today for um, as low as $2.97 you're able to take advantage of that uh, program today. You can literally go directly to our website, go under the Shop tab, and then the first paragraph you'll see is a click here, which will take you to our shopping cart. Um, on the shopping cart, you can go ahead and then click here. Uh, by the way, you can also go to this mxlcoach.com slash, um, uh, slash shop dash HTML, and that will get you to the same shopping cart, and you can kind of cruise through what programs are available. Um, all the different services and products we offer. The Double Your Income program is located under the DVD Digital Box Set um, tab on the shopping cart, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and uh, is also available through that platform. Um, the 
can, uh, the critical mass group coaching program that I mentioned a few minutes ago is available either if you're wanting us to do it for you and your internal corporate group, um, then you can call us and schedule what we call a discovery session. Uh, or if you are interested in becoming a part of the next critical mass group coaching class that will be starting up in mid-June, uh, you can go directly to the MXLCoach.com website. Um, you can click under the Programs tab under Group Coaching, and all the information is there under that Group Coaching tab to take advantage of that Critical Mass program. So basically, you've got three options. One-on-one -on -one coaching program, uh, which is $11.95 for the first month to get started. Um, I mean, think about the return on that investment. Think about what your coaching subscription uh, investment would, would look like. You know, eleven ninety five to get started. You do for most loan officers, you're making between two and twenty five hundred per loan commission. You do one additional loan per month, and that's going to be about a two two and a half times return on investment um, for that eleven ninety five nine hundred a month program. I mean, to be honest, guys, that's our primary goal. The majority of myself and the rest of the coaching team are committed to trying to achieve that goal as fast as humanly possible. In a purchase market, it's going to take 60 to 90 days to start seeing that extra couple of loans coming through the pipe. Um, but guys, historically, we hit that target within 90 days over 80% of the time where your coaching investment is yielding you a two, two and a half times return within 90 days. So uh, if you're interested in a little bit more information, you're not quite ready to pull the trigger uh, despite the, the, the advantages of, of moving quickly and rewarding people who take action. Um, we do have an opportunity to find out a little bit more about in depth the, the coaching programs, what they involve and what they entail. Uh, you can go ahead and attend our next Maximum Acceler Acceleration Experience where I'll do some live coaching examples with a couple of guest participants. We'll walk through a coaching experience. You'll see kind of what it looks like in action. Maybe you even want to participate in that group coaching experience and get some support and guidance. Uh, that next one's coming up Tuesday, June 3rd um, at 11 Central. We'll be able to take advantage of that for you. Uh, beyond that, we also have our strategy session, uh, which is a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. If you really are serious about taking your business to the next level and you really are leaning, you know, you're 60, 70 percent sure that coaching one-on-one -on -one is going to be the right thing for you to do, um, we'd be happy to spend a little bit of time with you to talk a little bit through it, um, answer any questions you have about the one-on-one -on -one program, and go a little bit deeper on how to uh, take advantage of that. We'll also give you a little bit of a coaching experience along the way. The reason for that is because you know it, the best way we've found to understand the true value of coaching is to actually experience it. So we offer a no-cost, no-obligation consultation with one of our coaches to identify how and, and when it makes sense for you to move forward if it's the right step for you. Um, if you want to take advantage of that, you can jump on our website, or you are welcome to go ahead and post in the Q&A right now um, uh, that you'd be interested in taking advantage of one of those strategy sessions. Keep in mind they are scheduled on a first-come, first-served basis, so um, go ahead and give us the best phone number and email address to be able to reach out to you for scheduling if you'd like to coordinate that. So go ahead and post strategy session, uh, the best phone number and email address, um, and then we can kind of go from there. Um, Otherwise, upcoming events, just to be aware of, um, if you're interested in a powerful training opportunity and a great networking event to connect with some of the top of the top in the industry, um, some of the great people uh, out there that are going to be gathering for uh, you know, people like uh, Greg Frost and Mark Madsen and, and uh, um, Rene Rodriguez and Sam Shohan are going to be gathering together, myself included, to offer a great program down in New Orleans in the first part of July at the Ultimate Mortgage Expo. If you're interested in attending um, through uh, June 6th, you can register for free um, and attend on Maximum Acceleration. Just type in the code in all capital letters, MAXUME. Go to ultimatemortgageexpo.com, check out the agenda, type in MAXUME.com. We're going to be there July 7th through the 9th, uh, Monday through Wednesday in New Orleans. Um, great venue that uh, our, our wonderful and illustrious host has provided us for us down there where we're going to get together and, and network and connect with some of the best of the best in the industry and talk about ideas and strategies to help you grow your business faster. Um, other than that, there was one other question that I wanted to clarify, um, and, and just I'm going to post this up here. Just, just a reminder again, today's program had to be rescheduled because of unfortunate circumstances with a, a, a uh, Derek got called to an emergency meeting that he was required to attend um, that was uh, that required him to be out of pocket traveling today. He found out about it literally 24 hours ago. 
um, and and had to make the shift to, to attend that meeting. There was no other way to, to get around it for him. He will be back with us on June 24th. Uh, with the program How to Master Your Database, Maximum Reach, Minimum Time, Finding Buyers uh, Within Your Own Contacts. Um, so anyway, the one last question that I did want to address that was posted in the Q&A today just before we step out is what are the differences between Maximum Acceleration and the core coaching program? Um, well, first of all, you know, recognize and understand best practices are best practices. The most effective ways to build a radically accelerating mortgage practice are the same, and and the core is a good program. I mean, they, they have a reputation of creating significant results. Uh, they have uh, they definitely follow a lot of the same patterns that we do when it comes to training and development and, and the types of systems that they implement. Um, their reputation also is is to be a fairly intense program. Um, you know, it is is is, is much more known as. Uh, a little bit more of a hardcore drill sergeant type program. It, it'd be, um, I guess, the, the difference would be um, not that I want to compare myself to something like this, but um, you know, if you're talking an exercise strategy, you know, a personal trainer guiding you through the physical growth is more like the maximum acceleration program. A spinning class where somebody's yelling and screaming at you all the time is a little bit more like the core. Um, just from my own personal reputation and what we've, we've heard feedback-wise from other clients. There is also a significant difference in expense with the CORE's Level 1 coaching program. Their one-on-one -on -one coaching program uh, typically is about twice the investment monthly that ours is, and typically they tend to run based on a curriculum-based program. I mean, the reality is, guys, in coaching, what we're really focusing on is a pattern of behavior change long-term. Our program is really focused on creating that change of habit that sticks long term and will be with you forever. Um, and there's really only two ways to do that at a very tactical level. One is to follow a very regimented curriculum based program. And I'll, I'll give it to the core. They have a great system and they teach solid curriculums based on the fundamental best, uh, best practices of building a mortgage success, uh, a successful mortgage practice. The difference is, is if what you most need in your stage of growth as an individual loan officer is what they teach in month seven of the program. You've got to wait until month seven to get it. In our program, our program is tailored to you. We build for every individual client a personal, specific, strategic growth strategy that your coach and you implement with the skills development and in-depth refinement because we have the technology in place to allow us to get to that point very, very quickly. So that being said, uh, just before I close out the program, one last thing I want to share with you is, is all of you have invested a significant amount of time in today's program. Um, and so the last thing that I want you to do before, uh, before we take uh, a break today and, and, and break off the conversation, one thing I want you to do is go ahead and take uh, a few seconds and, and do this exercise. Before you leave this program, before you step away and answer that next phone call or return that next email, decide the answer to these four key questions. One, what was the most valuable thing you heard in today's program? You can come back to the others later. You'll have a video later this week to follow up on. Two, what action do you need to take to make it a part of your daily business? What is the next most important step for you to take in implementing that best idea that you picked up from today's webinar? Third is by when will you have that action implemented? set a specific target and deadline, and fourth, who is going to be your accountability partner. Remember the Brigham Young study, if you want a 95% chance of implement, set a goal, set a specific plan to achieve the goal, put a deadline on that plan, and ask somebody to hold you accountable to that deadline. You do those four things, you have a 95% or better chance of implementation. So. With that being said, if you'd like some help with that accountability and in either a group or one-on-one -on -one environment and you'd like to find out more information about the, the opportunities that are available to you, or if you're ready to go ahead and make the commitment to move forward, go ahead and hop on the website and take advantage of the shopping cart to get that set up and we'll get you uh, started as soon as possible. Otherwise, um, if you are just curious but need a couple of questions answered, go ahead and hop on the website or post in the Q&A right now. Uh, the, um, the request for a strategy session along with the best phone number and email address for it to out to you and connect with you and connect with you for scheduling. Otherwise, guys, thank you for the participation today. Um, again, apologize 
disconnect with with uh, Derek not being able to present today. I, like I said, it was a little bit of a shock when I heard about it last minute. Last thing first is, is guys, is take advantage of these opportunities. We wish you all the greatest.